guys, it's Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Got a fun one today. We'll learn how to do In Too Deep by Sum 41. It's first one I've done by Sum 41, so it's a good place to start, I think, here. Uh, some challenging guitar stuff in this one. Um, guitarists really kind of fly around, jump all over the place, and we got a, a, a pretty challenging solo as well. It's pretty short, but, but not easy to play. I'm going to get into every little bit of it, all note for note, for you guys, like I always do. Before I do, though, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so you know when we release a new video. And like and comment the videos and all that stuff. And like I always say, if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, um, I always try to get the questions asked all the time, and you know, just different ways to support. The best way to do it is just join my Guitar Academy. Uh, that helps me out the most anyway. And it helps me keep all the YouTube stuff going too, but as a member of my Guitar Academy, you get uh, access to all my guitar courses as well, and I get you get personalized support. Um, with them as well, personalized support from me. Um, so please click the link in the description below. You get a free seven day trial to my Guitar Academy so you can check it all out. All right, let's jump into this track. I'm in standard tuning here. Um, and now we have this intro, which actually is a couple of guitar uh, parts played together. So when I started, I played one of them. So I was playing one of them and then that just repeats. Um, but we also have this one that's being played underneath it. So from the very beginning, those were being played together. I kind of separated them in the intro because obviously you can't play both words at the same time. So let me show you uh, both of them though. So if you have two guitar players uh, in the band or a buddy you can jam with, uh, you guys can just play these together. So we have this. So that's going to start here. Uh, I'm kind of palm muted on a clean tone on the ninth fret on the D string. You can hit it four times, the ninth fret on that D. Then you're going to go over to the nine on the G string, then back to the nine on the D, then over to the nine on the B string, and then back to the nine on the D. Like that. So we have this. All right, and then we play that note again, four more times again to kind of start the second half of it. And then we do a little descending, and then come back up. It just goes, so you play that note four times, one, two, three, four, and then go seven, so all on the D string, seven, six, seven, nine. All right, so we have this all together. All right, then we start that again, but we have a different ending. Right here. It's just a, it just goes all the way down the scale. So that's that same, first half is the same. Now this, instead of doing this, it just does this, which is seven, six on the D, and then nine, seven on the A. So that's the riff. So all together. Just repeat that. I'm trying to just keep going. Now, with that, we have this. thing repeating underneath it. So that starts with a low E string and then the octave of it here at the uh, seventh fret on the A string and then back to the low E string. So they kind of fit in that boom, bump, bump, kind of on the upbeat there. That last one on the upbeat. Bump, bump. So. And then we have a quick little after that. So that's going to be 7th fret on the A, then 6, 7 on the D, over to 4 on the G. So you can still palm your D until I get that top note. And then back down to the 7 on the D. So we have this. Alright, and then we have 
another hit here on the uh, four times on the open A string. And then we just have this easy little ascending thing, which is six, seven on the A, four, six on the D. Repeat everything from there. So play those two parts together and you're gonna have the intro to end too deep there. All right, so from there we have this kind of um, a, a quick little pre-chorus that stays on a clean um, setting, which looks like this. in obviously so it's gonna start with an E major triad here that's a bar across the ninth fret of the D G and the D just hit that so I'm kind of playing that and then killing the notes just muting them so cross that E major three times and then you're gonna to go to an A major triad so that's gonna be uh, the 11th fret on the you can just leave that bar there if you want and just lay the 11th fret on the D and 10th fret on the B. That turns it into an A major triad. Same rhythm there, hit it three times and then back to the E. So we have this. And then instead of going back to the A major chord, kicking the distortion. Start chugging on an A power chord down here, which is the open A string with the second fret there on the D. And then that takes us to the first chorus. Now, the interesting thing about the chorus, first two choruses are pretty similar. There's one little variation at the end of the second chorus. Uh, but then the third chorus is com played completely different. Um, so anyway, so let's, uh, let's check this out. So we have this right here. So that end, that chorus has this whole little kind of ending section. It kind of really grooves too. So um, we have just the, it starts though with just an E power chorus. So the open E string and then the second fret on the A. And you can add the second fret on the D if you want. And then take it over to the A power chord we did. And then back to the E power chord. So it kind of starts just rotating back. <laughs> So when it gets to that point in the chorus, he's just gonna hit, hit that A power chord twice. There's a quick little pause. Some of the pauses, you know, they have the snare drum going, and you, know, you can kind of match it with some muted hits or whatever. I'm not sure they're doing that at the beginning. They do definitely do that later on in the song though. So it's just a and then start continuing again with the same thing. And then when we get to this point, if you've done it kind of like three more times, I guess, three or four more times after that little pause, when you get to the A chord, instead of going back to the E power chord here, jump up here to kind of end the chorus. So that's that E power chord up here, the seventh fret. So we have the open E string, seventh fret on the A, ninth on the D and the G. And then take that down two frets to the D power chord. You're gonna to need to mute the low E string when you do that. And then back to the A power chord. So we have this all together for the course. Right here. All 
All right, and then we have kind of this little ending to the chorus. All right, so that star show up kind of, uh, kind of some hits on the low E string, the E power chord. And then jump up here and grab this octave. If you don't know what an octave is, an octave basically is the same note. The same note, just an octave apart. But in order to play them, we have to separate them across strings. So we have this seventh fret on the A string, and then the ninth fret on the G. So we have that D string in the middle. So you have to put um, you with that D string in the middle with the bottom of your index finger there. So I'm just playing this with the tip of the index finger, but the underneath the kind of the patty portion of it. Patty. Padded. I don't have a patty portion of my index finger. Padded portion of my index finger. Mute that D string. And it's also muting the low E by the way. Just the tip of my index finger is muting that. And then the index finger is also muting the B and the high E. So that index finger is kind of muting all the strings. So we just hear the note I'm playing on the A, and then it's muting every other string. See, I can, I can hit all six strings, but all you're hearing is that note right there on the A string. So you want to get that going, and then you just add that note on the ninth fret on the G, and you have the octave. That's how you want to play an octave. So we have, we jump up and grab that, and it's kind of slide that down. And that's a power chord off the fifth fret of the, a, of the low E string. So A power chord, hit that twice, down to the fourth fret, and then back to the fifth fret. So we have this. So it's kind of, it jumps around pretty quick, I know. So we have this. Sorry. Repeat. Then we do the same lick, except the octave being played at the seventh fret is going to be played at the eleventh fret. So that first note is 11, 13 on the G. Try this. So all together. Now we have a different ending here. After that last. The second time you play that octave 11, and we have this. We goes that power chord now goes five four two four. That's what it is. Sorry. And that takes us to verse number two, which is completely different than verse number one. So verse number two looks like that looks like this. course. So that's just the E, kind of just between the open E power chord, then the fourth fret power chord off the low E string, and then the fifth fret, the G sharp power chord and the A power chord. Back to E, G sharp A, G sharp A. So it's just the timing of them that you got to know. Hopefully you know the sound of the song pretty well. So we have this E a couple times, then the G sharp once, and then twice on the A. So we have this. Then hit that A again, back to the E, the G sharp one time again, and then here we go A twice, then G sharp once. And then back to the A a couple times, and then one more hit on it. So these types of things. It's just three chords, but it, it's just all downstrokes. But you just need a bit of hum. Dun, 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 so just like that is how you're going to be able to get it instead of overthinking it. All right. So we do that a few times, a couple times, and then we have the pre-chorus, which is this uh, a really simplified version of that. 
the A to, just the A to, I mean, E to A that we did for the pre-chorus in the beginning with those clean guitar triads, we had this instead. <laughs> back to the chorus again. So that's just the E power chord. To the A power chord, just kind of just keeping a steady eighth note rhythm, um, just all down strokes, just heavily palm muted. Back down to the E, back to the A. Let that A go, and then we get to the second chorus, which is the same as the first, except that section at the end where we want to stop. We were done. Uh, well, went to that the first chorus. Instead, here in the second chorus, we're gonna play that twice. All right, and then it basically goes to the solo rhythm from there. So we that, that really the chorus kind of ends there, and then we have this. Pretty short solo. So it's just kind of that E power chord. This is underneath the solo. So this is a rhythm that Derek would be playing. So, this. so we're kind of just kind of doing that E power chord up to the um, kind of E power chord a couple times, three times. A couple of them grab that octave again at the seventh fret and slide it back down. So you do that a few times. And then we start, and then kind of just fades out on the E, and then the actual solo starts, and we have this. So that's just the E power chord a couple times, and the F sharp power chord at the second fret. Then the D power chord off the fifth fret of the A string. So. Then we're gonna jump down here and play the fifth fret power chord on the uh, low E string. Do that a couple times and go four, two. So we have this. And then just repeat that. All right, so now we get to the actual solo itself. So let me play through the solo for you real quick. And then I'll show you how to play it. No, for this solo has some harmony guitar work in it at sections, um, but I'm not going to be doing all those. It's mostly just going to be, you know, what he would play live and stuff. And there's actually ways of doing this that's a little bit easier than the way he plays it. So I'll talk about that as well too. So here we go. <laughs> All right, especially and there's a big har harmony thing there. So what he's actually doing here is he's reaching over and he's tapping this. He's playing, now you can, like I said, you can play these notes. Let me show you the notes. It's five, four, zero on the high E string. And then up to seven, five, zero. So four, five, zero. And then seven, five, zero. So you could easily do this just with the left hand alone, which would make it easier to do. But he, you know, I gotta keep it authentic. He actually taps the top note. So he plays this, tap five, pulls off to pulls off to four on the in the with the left hand, and then got him to the open. Quit. And then he does the same thing here, tapping seven. Pull off five and pull off to the open string. So this. So and then come over here. Here's a harmony line. There's a there's a high harmony line that does this, but this lower, which is what he'll he, I usually see him do in, in live, which is. Four, hammer on four, 
just out of nowhere. You don't need to use your pick for this solo, really. Hammer five, pull back off to four, hammer back to five, and then back to se then hammer on to seven. So we have this. And then we have this. So that's going to be hammering on the ninth fret on the B string. This is all on the B here. Play the B and pull off to the open string. So that's the lick, and he just changes the melody. He's going to change the note that's being played up here, but always every note pulls off to the open B. So we play hammer on 9, pull off to B. Hammer 10, pull off to B. All, all, hammer 12, pull off. 10, pull off. 9, pull off. 7. So we have this 9 all the way up to 12. So 9, 10, 12, back down to 10, 9. And then just go 7, 9, 10. So. Now you gotta really. When you do that last pull off, reach over and get to jump back and do that tapping thing. So that same thing he did earlier. And then we kind of go up here and do these things, this little pedal tone. What it does is the same thing, except when you get to this seventh fret, that's when it, it doesn't, it doesn't go back to the nine and ten. It just says. You do that last pull off from seven to the open string, and then jump up here and go to the 17th fret. And I'll just stop. Bend in the least there at the 17th fret on the B. All right, so that's, like I said, there's a lot going on there. It's kind of tricky to jump back to the tapping, and then it's all legato and stuff like that. But uh, um, anyway, it's pretty short, but like I said, pretty challenging to play uh, up to speed. So then we get to the, um, Bridge section, which is uh, really, it's things just start kind of uh, really picking up here. There's a very climatic chorus at the end. So we have this bridge section, which sounds like this. So uh, actually, we get, then we get to the chorus there. But this bridge, like I said, it really jumps around really quick. I know Derek doesn't do this live. He, uh, he probably lets uh, Dave do this when he's jumping around really fast. But it's, it's not the easiest. Now, there's probably you can play the chorus up here. So you don't have to jump quite as bit. Uh, but it sounds like he's hitting an A power chord there. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, so I went with that one and just did the jump because I think it actually sounds a little bit better. Uh, but Dave might be moving up the next because he's probably going to do this octaves and, and Derek might be just hanging out down here without doing the octaves. I'm not exactly sure. So, um, how, how they do it live. But on the recording, let's just uh, stick with what uh, sounds good. So we have this first, we just E power chord. Hit a couple times in the F sharp. And then we basically do the same thing off the A string. So we have the A power chord, and then that B power chord. Kind of just hit each twice. So we have this. So we kind of go through it twice, just like that. E, F sharp, A, B. And then we start doing the same chords, the same rhythm. We jump up and grab that octave shape um, that we're very familiar with at this point, right? Um, in between each one. So you still keep the same rhythm going, but just to fill in the get space with that octave. Seventh fret octave. Again. All right, now we ramp up the difficulty, but we keep the same thing going underneath. 
But the octave that we grab in between and, and during the pauses is not 7th fret, it's that one at the 11th. So we have this, a big jump. So I think we gotta do that like one and a half times. And then it just stops on that A. So we basically play this riff twice without any octaves. Then two times with the seventh fret octave. And then like one and a half times with the 11th fret octave. And end on that A there, and that's when we have some big kind of uh, down, down up mutes. And then we get to chorus number three, which is uh, kind of using that riff that happened at the end of the first and second chorus but it's using it the entire time with those octaves. So they've kind of done a really nice job of slowly building the song. So you can see like that first pre-chorus is just a couple of clean triads, the second one of those kind of palm muted triads. So they're just, they, it's, it's a really good job of crafting something that just kind of builds as it goes. So this last solo here is a, a little bit longer, a lot longer, it looks like this. <laughs> Alright, so I will say this ending chorus, um, I was transcribing, it's kind of off the YouTube official video. Um, and then later on I checked out the, the, the Spotify and it, it seemed like the endings of them were a little bit different. There are just how many times they repeat this stuff, maybe where they play the octaves. So that might be the case here. So I'll kind of cover just kind of how it's on Spotify here. <laughs> this, this Spotify ending, it, it, they might be the same. I might just be losing my mind. But anyway, so we have... Um, this outro course was kind of structured like this. So it's kind of the end of the that ending riff in the in the first chorus. So we had that little E power chord, the octave, and then that power chord, uh, fifth fret twice, four, and then back to five. So we played this before. So end of the first chorus, it's the same thing. But it's kind of the, the main riff now uh, for this last chorus. And then we do the same thing and there's an octave harmony added. So we have still, maybe Derek, still doing the, the, harmon the same riff but with the harmonics of the seventh fret, right? So after that four times there, I think now Dave goes up and starts playing the 11th fret, the G sharp octave, while Derek continues to play the seven. So, so Dave will be doing this. So basically just like three times. So, and Derek the whole time is still doing the sevens. All right, so four times, both of them just doing the sevens together. same ending and then three times with Derek playing the sevens and Dave playing the eleven. And from here we go to this ending which is a little bit different so it starts kind of the same as we did before in the end of the first the first and second or second course. 
right? We had that we played before, the E power chord, the D power chord, the A power chord. But now they do this again, they add a chord at the end. That's a C power chord with a G in the bass. Um, they do that just to really kind of thicken up the sound. So that's this, uh, so after you do this, so it's basically from, after you get to, there's three times. That E, D, A, so like normal. And then E, D, A, C. So that C is third fret on the A and the low E. And then fifth fret on the D and the G. Then repeat that again. Just the C, the E, D, the A, and then the E, D, A, C. So they did the nor riff normal, and then they added that C chord at the end of it. Then they repeated all that. And then they continue to repeat at the end of the song, but every single time now they add that C. Now, as this chorus goes, you start hearing this overdub being played over it. Um, so, and then they just kind of end this, the, the main riffs underneath it, and then they continue that overdub that was going on. So you're gonna, this part right here that I'm about to show you, it ends the song, it's kind of being played by itself, but it's being played over that. being played there too it's just a little bit low in the mix but obviously when this guitar stops and then we have this will continue by itself so if you have a second guitar player you need to be playing this over those chords but then by itself at the end it looks like this so that's going to be some double stops we're going to play the ninth part on the d and the i'm sorry the, the g and the b so we play that, and then now, same, keep that bar going with the index finger. Just gonna add now the 10th from the B. Keep that nine on the G. Then go back to the nines. Go nine, 10, nine, 10 on the B. So the note that's changing is the note that's on the B string. So we have this nine, 10, nine. Then up to 12, there on the B. Then back to 10, nine, so it is. Now from there we just do the 9 10, 9 10. Again, remember always keep that 9 on the G with it. And then um, we're going to play back to the 9s. Then go over to 11 on the D and 11 on the G. Then nine on the D and the G, and then back to the 11s on the D and the G. So, so we have this all together. And then you just repeat that. So you repeated it twice and then end it, adding the ninth fret there on the D and the G together at the end of the song. All right, so there's a lot going on there. It's a great, uh, it's a good challenge there. And um, if you can get up to speed, yeah, that's a good accomplishment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.